Yeah, hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and I have been attempting to build a flea weight for a little while with some varying degrees of success. Uh, Dr. Criminal, the hex bug flea weight was the closest I've ever came, but I had issues with the weapon spinning up and fixing them is going to require moving weight around, which is kind of hard to do with that chassis. So I thought I would try something a little bit different and try and make my life easier because what I realized is not only I've been trying to build fleas, but I have been building ant weights and building ant weights that have lighter and lighter and lighter components in them. So I have the beginner spinner, which you can put a 30 gram blade on. So the rest of the robot is 120 grams, including a fairly hefty uh, brushless uh, drone arm in there. I also have built the saw robot, which needs a full saw and uh, disc setup, and the whole rest of the robot's only about 100 grams, uh, which is really not a lot. And then, of course, I have the plastic ant weight that I did in my video talking about how effective plastic ant weights are, and that one chassis in that video could hold a 50 plus gram weapon. So the entire chassis, all the electronics, everything in there was under 100 grams. So what I'm thinking is maybe I can use these techniques and bits and maybe eke out a 75 gram flea weight using ant weight components. The only thing that's going to happen with this is I'm going to have to step away from building a spinner. I'm going to have to build a flipper because I don't have the weight and I know I don't have the weight to put a big enough brushless motor and a, uh, an ESC and a battery that can hold all of that inside the same weight as two N20 motors. Because that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the things that I know work because one of the big problems I'm facing with building this fully weight at the moment is a drive system. Getting a small, reliable drive system that's easy to output that power into a wheel is exceptionally difficult. Um, so throwing some N20s in there is a really, really heavy solution to that problem, but it just works. So we're going to try a lot of this stuff. So here is the main chassis. I have stolen, essentially stolen the chassis out of the super low weight ant weight and I have modified it. So rather than having a brushless motor in here, we have a mount for a servo. And the servo we're gonna use is the same one that I'm currently using in the saw robot. It is a high voltage servo, which means that I can plug it straight into a battery and it's totally fine. Uh, and it's also really lightweight. These things are like five grams, they're insane. Uh, and these, while they are much pricier than a lot of the Metal Gear servos that you can get, these are definitely my recommendation for anybody who's attempting to build small, lightweight, and really powerful things. Uh, so anyway, this is gonna get lock in there, and rather than any kind of locking mechanism, we're literally gonna cable tie it in and maybe put a drop of hot glue down at the back just to make it stay there. We're going as cheap, cheerful, and light as we possibly can. And that, of course, is because we have two N20 motors and uh, wheels. So these N20 motors are the standard uh, DF robot ones that I use pretty much everywhere, other than when I'm using a Malinky, but I don't actually have any Malinkies at the moment because the two Malinkies are being used. I actually probably should buy some more. Anyway, so we've got those. We've got two tiny, very, very lightweight flexible wheels, uh, and we're going to be using my standard uh, 2FSA receiver type. Also, I will say, just for comparison's sake, because we are using ant weight components, this thing isn't actually that small. This is Vera version 2, and as you can see, it's about as wide as Vera version 2, maybe a little bit slimmer by the time the wheels are on and everything's kind of locked in place. And it's, you know, about the same kind of length, uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit shorter, but not a whole lot. Uh, so realistically, what we've traded in here is we have thinner armor and no real front protection on this thing. So the flipper is going to have to handle all of that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not huge. Uh, but it's also not small.
Okay, uh, so this is a thing. <laughs> Uh, and we have problems, uh, more than I was expecting. The little 2S battery that I made up ages ago, uh, one of the wires literally just broke off just then uh, as I was about to plug it into everything. So that's out or at least off the table for the moment. Uh, the rest of the build seems to have worked okay, uh, but having to fit the new bigger battery in there means that there's now not a lot of space in here. I do need to cut down the wire, uh, sorry, the cable tie for the servo. Uh, it is bulging out the bottom more than I thought I could get away with. I thought I could like jam in a little bit more, but it doesn't really like doing that too much. Uh, so I think it's actually currently running on that, which is a bit of a problem, or it's running on the servo. Either way, uh, these front two prongs don't actually touch the ground at the moment. They are literally sitting quite high, like I can get a, a screwdriver in underneath those. Uh, so that's not good. I'm also gonna do something I don't normally wouldn't do with a combat robot. That is, I'm gonna power this up and give it a quick test drive around on the bench. Uh, because yeah, it's just a flipper and it's a fully weight flipper at that. So it should be totally okay to drive this guy around. Let's have a go. Oh, okay. So we're sitting on the flipping arm. That's a good thing, because that means I can just kind of adjust where the end point of the flipper is, and then we'll be okay. Motors don't work, though. Okay, so I found the problem. It was not a motors problem. It was a battery so low that it was almost dead problem, like below six volts, which is not good for a 2S LiPo battery. So uh, with a new battery in place, we can do this. Uh, we can also drive around a little bit. I have the, uh, the left and right backwards, so this doesn't quite work as well as it should because it's going backwards when I'm telling it to go forwards, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, so far it's actually working pretty well. Now, I will say I am at 66 grams currently, which is less than I was expecting. So I have uh, nine grams to do a top plate, and those of you who have been watching this channel for a while know that top plates I take them, take them or leave them, and mostly I leave them. So what I'm actually thinking is I might snap these two front forks off, especially as this uh, particular arm likes to ride quite low. I'm gonna snap these two off. I'm gonna print a new version of this arm, but then I'm gonna acetone weld a nice kind of wedge along the front of it uh, so that we've got something a little bit nicer than this, basically. Something a little bit longer and wider, I think, is what I want. Because uh, the servo should be able to handle this, no problem. Uh, but yeah, if I can use a little bit of that leftover weight to make just a little bit of a bigger uh, lifting surface, I think that's going to be a good use of that weight. And then we'll put a clear plastic top on this or something, I don't know. I mean, it's not particularly invertible at the moment because uh, these wheels are tiny, tiny things. Uh, so even in its current state, uh, if I just jammed a lid flat, it wouldn't actually drive inverted. So. And there it is, a fairly new look for the thing. Uh, I will also say, of course, I have swapped out uh, the motor mount, or the servo motor mount, because the zip tie was a little bit wobbly, mostly because you can't like bend 90 degree corners in a zip tie. So we've now got a nice little 3D printed mount, which actually sits a lot more rigidly. It's still not perfect, but I actually do need a little bit of wobble so I can straighten up the, um, the wedge out the front here. But with that in place, I can just give it some slight dobs of hot glue and it should stay pretty well, I think. Now, the big question, of course, is weight because this is as close as it's gonna be to actually complete without a lid. Uh, so if I've got a little bit of weight, I'll add a lid. If not, we will, um, ooh, 68 grams. Okay, so that means we have 
seven grams for a lid. That could be a 3D printed lid. I'm very tempted. Uh, I might have a look at doing that. However, for the time being, let's try and flip something, shall we? Uh, and I said I was gonna do this in the test box, but I don't think it matters all that much. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take the four wheel drive lifter from last week, uh, and we are going to try and flip it with a 75 gram robot. Uh, this should work, theoretically, uh, because this servo is designed for this. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, that's right, I forgot to change. Oh, okay. Be helpful if I could get in underneath it. Okay, all right, well, let's just cheat, shall we? <laughs> oh no, oh, of course. <laughs> So the problem there, of course, is that we don't have enough weight in the robot to uh, actually lift the ant weight because if, yeah, the ant weight is just far too heavy and it means that we get a tilt on the flea weight rather than a tilt on the ant weight. And I should have seen that coming, to be perfectly honest, that. <laughs> oh, of course, okay. Okay, let's try a slightly lighter ant weight, shall we? Because this guy, not fully an ant weight, the, uh, the brushless hammer. Um, hey, there we go. And doesn't have as much grip on the ground, uh, better weight distribution for lifting. So, we get some lift. And we can kind of sort of drag it round. <laughs> yes, okay, oh, 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 that's interesting. So, doesn't like, yeah, we twisted, oh, we twisted the servo and the motor mount, I think. Yeah, something's happened. We twisted something by jamming the lifter up into the, um, the wheels there. Oh, yeah, you can see at the front, we've really, really messed something up. Oh, I see, it's how the, servo horn attaches into the 3D printed plastic horn. Hot glue is gonna be the solution to that. And there you have it. Doesn't look like a whole lot has changed, but we're now up to 70 grams. The electronics can't fall out anymore. Uh, and yeah, we're functionally complete. I still would like to go through and hot glue a few bits and pieces. Uh, the servo horn into the flipper mechanism. Uh, the servo itself needs a bit of hot glue. I kind of want to hot glue the motors in place as well, just just in case. Uh, and also I need to hot glue the switch so that it doesn't move when you try and flick it, which that's a big thing that I do in a lot of robots. Anyway, uh, so we're at 70 grams now. I, we're probably gonna do another two or three grams of hot glue uh, because unfortunately, as much as I want it to be, hot glue is not a weightless substance. Um, yeah. So this is it though, this is, this is, I would say, at this point, complete. As a 75 gram robot made entirely out of parts that I have put into ant weights before. Um, yeah, there you go. Its functionality has not really changed all that much, so I'm not gonna do any more testing on it. You guys have seen it a bunch already. I uh, tested it running around here on the bench. So that is gonna be it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.